Look at these beautiful potatoes, ready for market. They got a lot of time and a lot of money tied up in them, so they've got to be as good as the best of care can make them. But even the best plant has its enemies. It doesn't matter what you're trying to grow, there's almost certainly some little member of the animal kingdom that likes it better than you do. Or some plant that grows better in the same soil, or even a disease that'll kill it for you. Agriculture accounts for 45% of Australia's annual export revenue. But if pests like these had their way, it probably wouldn't be a tenth of that. The best defense, in fact the only defense against pests, is attack. You can attack them in any number of ways, pesticides for example. But before you use a pesticide, there are a couple of questions that you should ask. And the first one is, what's my pest? That may sound obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people just don't bother. Now the second question is, can I manage without a pesticide? There are a lot of natural predators, ladybirds for example, and, and other predators, clean up an awful lot of pest insects. In fact, the predatory insects of this world clean up more pest insects than even the most effective pesticides. So, before you use a pesticide, see if your pest insect has any natural enemies. You might be able to get rid of him that way. Another pest control method is to destroy all crop residues. Clean plowing and cultivation is a big help here. Get all that dead stuff well into the ground and don't give them anywhere to breed. The pest problem is the same no matter what the scale of your operation. And here in the backyard, I've decided that I need a pesticide. The little chap that's run amok of my sprouts is the cabbage moth larva. And the thing that'll fix him is this. And this deals not only with cabbage moths, but with leaf-eating insects on broccoli, cabbages, cauliflowers, turnips, and on sprouts. This is a pretty specific pesticide, but some of them aren't. With some of the other pesticides, special care has to be taken. Some pesticides, for example, will kill bees or ladybirds or spiders. And they're not pests. 
Not necessarily, anyhow. Well, a pest is anything that threatens the produce on your land. Weeds, insects, feral animals. They can all be considered pests at certain times. In fact, there are times when even a healthy, worthwhile plant can be considered a pest. Now, that spud plant shouldn't be there. It's taking space and nourishment from my onions, so it's a pest. Well, what's really got me beat is the cauliflowers. There's some sort of fungus has got into them, and I just can't figure out what it is. So I called in the ag department. Too sure. This, this could either be a bacterial problem you've got here or it could be fungal. Yeah. I, I think I'd better take it back to the lab. Yeah, you're going to be able to control it? Uh, yeah, there's no doubt. Jim can be pretty confident about knocking my fungus on the head because the pesticide companies spend incredible amounts of money developing new pesticides. There's an awful lot to think about. Effects on the crop, the user, the customer, the environment. And it all has to be researched and predicted. For every new product that arrives on the shelves, 10,000 others may have been rejected by the manufacturer. It takes time, anything up to 10 years for each product, and it costs money. The container you may buy represents up to a $30 million investment on the part of the company. Well, Jim was right to feel confident. He did find something for me, and I'm just about to start using it. Once I've got rid of this, that is. You wouldn't believe the number of blokes that get caught this way. They put the cigarette down. They get the pesticide on their hands. Bingo. It's on their lips. And if they start feeling crook, they don't know what's causing it. But the safest thing is, don't smoke around pesticides. Pesticides are something that really do have to be kept under lock and key, by the way. And that means a real lock and key. It may sound a bit stupid, but make sure the shed is well lit. And here's the reason. If a product costs $30 million to get into production, you can be sure that what the label tells you is important. You don't want to be using the wrong one or using it at the wrong concentration. So make sure you can and do read the label. It may just be the most important piece of paper that you ever read. This is the one that Jim gave me for the fungus. It's highly toxic and highly concentrated, so I'm not going to take any chances with it. I don't intend to spill any, but if I do, I'm covered all over. Often thinking of drinking any either. But if somebody accidentally does, I know what to do because it tells me right here on the label. And I've read it already, of course. By the time it gets into your eyes and your mouth, it's a bit late to read up on it. So read the label and obey what it tells you. Half a kilo is all I need. Spilling concentrated pesticides isn't something you should do too often. But if you do spill any, make it harmless. Now, if I spill any of this, the right thing to do is to clean it away with water and bleach, 
and then neutralize the residue with hydrated lime. There are different procedures, of course. This leaflet on the wall gives you a full description of how to deal with pesticide spills. You can get it from the Agricultural and Veterinary Chemicals Association, but let's hope you never need it. I've already calibrated the sprayer according to the instructions on the label. And I've got the right nozzles for the spray pattern I need, again, according to the instructions on the label. And I've got the right amount of mix in the tank. So let's try it out. There are plenty of ways of using pesticides, depending usually on the form they come in. Dust, granules, wettable powders, soluble powders, solutions, emulsions, emulsifiable concentrates, flowables, liquefied gases. The list goes on and on. They're all perfectly safe, as long as you treat them with respect. and respect starts with the right protective gear. If this bloke spills any of the pesticide on his body, he could be in serious trouble. Absorption through the skin is probably the most common way of getting pesticide poisoning. If you must transfer pesticide out of its container, never put it into anything except an identical pesticide container. And of course, keep that shed locked. Make particularly sure that you keep to the withholding period on the label. It makes sense. You have to give the pesticide time to become completely harmless. The wind can be an enemy when you're applying a pesticide. Not only does it stop the stuff from landing where you want it, it may also put it where you definitely don't want it. The best advice I can give you is read the label and obey it. Pesticides are like machines. Used properly, they allow you to do things you wouldn't have thought possible. Misused, they can hurt you or somebody else very badly. Well, in a few weeks, well, this will be a bumper crop of healthy collies. They'll do people good, they'll make me a living, and they'll help Australia's export figures. But I couldn't be so sure about that prediction if it wasn't for pesticides. Pesticides can be a great help if you use the one that's right for your job and if you use them sensibly. <laughs>